Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I take a closer look at the Universa Interflex TL, a pretty obscure 1970s 35mm single lens reflex camera that I only stumbled upon because of an ad on Instagram by the Italian fashion house Brunello Cuccinelli. Um, to be honest, I had never seen this camera before and at first mistook it for a Leica Flex SL2, shame on me, but then quickly realized that a closer look, okay, I have no idea what this camera is. I went online, started researching it, realized that it's pretty rare and obscure and of course went on eBay and looked for one. And I actually found one in pretty decent condition, um, coming with two different lenses um, and costing only 40 euros. And I did something pretty irrational given all the cameras in this household, I ended up buying it. And uh, as you can tell, it's a little bit funny because Brunello Cuccinelli wanted to draw my attention to a 4,500 US dollar cardigan and I ended up buying uh, another 35 millimeter single lens reflex camera for only 40 euros. It came with two different lenses, a 50mm f1.8 Auto Universar and a 135mm f2.8 Auto Universar lens. And of course, when the camera arrived, I was super excited and at first, yeah, took it through an initial cleaning using some isopropanol. I really went through all the nooks and uh, little corners. Um, making it shine again and as new again I also cleaned the battery compartment to make sure that it would work properly again and take a battery and um, also cosmetically um, replace the somewhat weird camera caddy strap with a in my opinion very nice and fitting over that hand strap here and uh, last but not least, since the 50mm lens didn't come without a lens cap, I went to Photosauta here in Munich and luckily in one of their um, vintage lens cap boxes found a fitting Pentax one um, that yeah fit perfectly and they were kind enough to just hand it over to me and say hey have fun with it. So for 40 euros I got this beautiful little package and get it cleaned again, tested the shutter speeds and everything and uh, yeah felt like it's time to uh, shoot a first test roll and take it out and take a closer look at this beautiful camera. The Universa Interflex TL was actually manufactured by Cosina in Japan and is based on the Cosina Highlight camera but made to the specifications of the German Universa Phototechnik GmbH. So they basically had some small wishes, branded the camera differently, so for instance here the shutter release button is different in comparison to the Cosina Highlight, but other than that they are basically the same cameras and Universa did that so that the camera would fit into their mail order catalog that they were offering to clients in Germany and Western Europe between 1964 and 1994. Um, so the camera is not an Universa camera but only branded that way. It was actually built by, by Cosina and they sold uh, cameras from many other manufacturers like Franca and Dacora and so on and it was quite a common practice at the time. This particular camera was allegedly introduced in either 1968 or 1970, which kind of fits its simple but beautiful 1970s design. It also comes with rather simple electronics, um, a built-in um, CDS uh, cell, a light meter, and uh, a built uh, through the lens um, metering um, system. Um, the sensitivity of the light meter can be set by this beautiful dial here on the front between ISO 25 and 1600 and um, that would then show in the viewfinder on the right side um, 
Here, if you press the on button on the left side of the viewfinder, it would show up here as the center of the needle mechanism. And then of course you could manipulate your shutter speed or your aperture, and then as a result, um, see um, how it affects your exposure. The CDS cell is powered um, originally via a mercury cell. Um, today you can either use an LR44 battery if you're bold and um, yeah, don't mind the 1.5 voltage, um, the volt that might be too much voltage for the particular electronics here and in my case I played it safe and went for the wine cell alternative to the original mercury batteries that has exactly the same voltage with 1.35 volt and uh, that worked both options were perfectly fine but again I felt um, yeah more secure so to speak and not damaging the light meter by uh, going for the wine cell. Um, inside the viewfinder you also have a focusing mechanism, a microprism um, here in the very um, center that you can use. And what is interesting about this particular viewfinder that it's not full aperture. So if you stop down your aperture it actually gets darker. At the time there were many manufacturers moving in that direction and there was a debate going on whether to always have full aperture or whether to show the photographer what happens in the viewfinder if they stop down. And eventually, as most of you will know, um, the full aperture version um, became the standard. But this was not uncommon to have something like this here as well at the time. Um, the same dial also lets you set the shutter speed here on the front um, between one um, second and all the way up to one one thousandth of a second plus a bulb mode. Um, you have a really nice uh, Copal S shutter, a mechanical shutter built in. Um, that comes with, in my opinion, a really beautiful, rich and definitive sound that I immediately noticed in the original um, Brunello Cucinelli ad that uh, sparked my interest. And I was like, okay, wow, this is a beautiful shutter. It really sounds nice. I need to, to hear it firsthand. And uh, I was not disappointed. It's really, really nice. And um, as you can imagine, as a mechanical shutter, it's disconnected from the light meter. So you can just, if you want, use the on button here on the left um, and press it down um, using your index finger on the left hand to activate the light meter. But you can also do without that and just use a handheld meter or um, yeah, use the Sunny 16 rule to guess your exposure and you're good to go. And of course, this is uh, really, really nice. Um, the camera was available in black and silver and personally I really really like the black version here especially with this beautiful typography here in the center. This has in my eyes really nice 1970s touch. Uh, the top plate features a rectangular shutter release button, a nicely designed frame counter, film advance lever and a film rewind crank. And the bottom features a tripod socket, um, battery compartment, a film rewind button and a lever to open the back of the camera. And on the front of the camera is a self-timer lever and the side features two flash connections, um, one X and one M connection for external flashes, of course. And that's it, a pretty straightforward camera with bare bones features, but still everything you need to take a good photograph. Um, you can even do multiple exposures using the button here and uh, on the bottom plate. Um, so everything that you would expect from an SLR plus um, an, a slightly unusual use of a, a light meter with the on switch here and an interestingly placed shutter speed dial and ISO um, dial here on the front. The camera comes with an M42 mount um, which gives you access to all sorts of lenses from Pentax, Pentacon, KMZ but also Carl Zeiss Jena. And um, I was positively surprised by the two lenses that it came with, especially this 50 millimeter here. Comes with a really nice, albeit a little bit busy bokeh, but I was really surprised um, by the results and sharpness that these lenses produced.
What about the handling in my personal impressions? The camera is comparatively large and yet it's also very solid and well built. So if you're looking for something durable, this is certainly an interesting option. Um, the fully mechanical shutter lets you use it even without the light meter, which I really appreciate. And as I've mentioned before, um, it has a beautiful and rich sound in my opinion. And it just is a joy to use and taking photographs. And to me, at least, this is what it comes down to, that this is the kind of camera that encourages me to pick it up and just go out just because I really want to hear that shutter sound and just use it. Um, taking a moment longer to properly meter your scene using that old CDS cell is also a lot of fun. And I found myself often playing around and kind of going um, with the CDS cell first and having the the index finger pressing down on, on the on button and just metering the scene. And what I really liked here is that if you um, decide to take the shot, the light meter on switch automatically goes up again. And if you would decide against taking a shot, you can just manually push it up. Um, and this, I think, had a nice touch in terms of uh, functionality. What also adds to the usability of the camera is that the shutter release button is rectangularly shaped and placed to the front of the top plate. And um, this I really, really liked. And this is, by the way, also a change from the original Cosina highlight uh, design. And having used a lot of typical SLRs also from that period, I found it quite interesting to have a different button layout in this particular case and not have the shutter speed dial on the top, but instead have a pretty clean um, top plate and have all the controls at the front, which also means that you can still keep the camera at eye level and manipulate both the light meter with your left index finger and the um, other um, uh, shutter speed dial with your um, right index finger. Um, and that, at least to me, worked per perfectly fine and was really, really a joy to use. Um, this setup is not well suited, in my opinion, for super quick street photography. I believe a rangefinder with a um, focusing tap lens is much quicker for such zone focusing and also for guessing um, the, the, the light and then the distances that would still be um, supported here and, and still be, would be in focus, so to speak. Of course, you can also do that with such SLR camera, but in my opinion, the focusing throw is often too long on such lenses to be really, really quick. And then since you don't have a focusing tab, it also takes a moment longer to, to focus it and you don't have the same kind of muscle memory typically. Um, so you can still do it, but personally I felt where it really shines is taking portraits. This was really a lot of fun doing it. Both the, the micro prism worked really nice in terms of focusing. And um, yeah, I got some great shots um, doing that. Most importantly, from my, my perspective, what I really enjoyed about this camera is kind of rediscovering and then reviving this old gear. I've mentioned this before, cleaning a camera always creates a different kind of attachment to it that you really sit down, take 60 or 90 minutes to properly clean it, make it yours, so to speak, make it shine again, test all the functionality, make sure that the light meter is working and so on. This is a lot of fun and it really makes you, makes it your camera. And most importantly, it shows that with all the hype cameras out there, it sometimes is worth remembering that these are just little boxes with the task of exposing a negative um, and attaching a camera, a, a lens to the camera in the right distance to the film plane and then giving you nice controls to get correct exposure. And this is what all these little boxes do for us. And to me, I really realized that what's really coming down to is how much fun it then is to actually use that little box to set correct exposure. And uh, sometimes, at least to me, it's more interesting to have something that not everyone is using and to get this for a pretty good bargain deal on eBay and then make it your own by cleaning it and reviving it and so on can actually be much more fun than just following the hype um, and buying the next hype camera that every YouTuber is talking about. So I'm actually incredibly grateful for Brianello Cuccinelli and um, putting this ad in front of me in my Instagram feed because it made me follow uh, um, my passion and go down a rabbit hole of not just 
researching this camera and making this video, but also renewing my interest in M42 lenses. There are fantastic lenses out there. I'm reading through the Reddit forums and sometimes even foreign language um, forums. It's, it's really a joy to do that and rediscovering Eastern German manufacturers or Soviet manufacturers, um, seeing comparisons between Carl Zeiss Jena and Carl Zeiss Oberkochen lenses. Having, of course, the fantastic Pentax M42 mount lenses. Um, this is really, really great. You get access to all sorts of character lenses. You get a lot of recommendations in the forums and still can find stuff that is unique. So if you're into vintage lenses and vintage cameras, the whole M42 system is really a joy and uh, an interesting rabbit hole to explore and to go down to. So this is what the camera really did to me. Um, yeah, reminding me of my passion and that it's often worth taking a second and third look in this particular hobby and that it is all the more rewarding putting in the additional research, especially when it comes to these vintage cameras. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and my review of the Universa Interflex TL. Even if Brunello Cuccinelli didn't manage to sell me an expensive cardigan or jacket, what they really did is remind me that something does not have to be very expensive and happiness doesn't cost a lot of money. So I'm actually grateful for the ad that they showed me and uh, my initial reaction was <laughs> completely wrong considering it a Leica Flex SO2 then even believing it should be a Leica Flex SO2 to kind of match the character that they were trying to portray. But I ended up um, going down a rabbit hole that I really really enjoyed and um, for someone just starting out with film or ha wanting something in the collection that is kind of low tech but still very reliable i think this camera is actually worth considering and as i've mentioned before it also renewed my interest in the m42 mount which offers fantastic lenses so if this might be interesting to use as well i can highly recommend taking a look at this particular camera or the cozina highlight um, if this is a more available more easily available in your markets so I hope you enjoyed this somewhat different episode of Analog Insights. If you did, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.